Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, April 21st, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today almost feels like Patch Tuesday. We got uh, two products that require critical patches that uh, will address vulnerabilities that are already being exploited in the wild. First of all, we got our good old friend Pulse Secure. FireEye today published a blog post in coordination with Pulse Secure announcing a new vulnerability that apparently is exploited in the wild and it does allow the execution of arbitrary code without authentication. Now, FireEye has a ton of detail about this vulnerability. Sadly, no patch available yet for this vulnerability. It is being exploited together with older vulnerabilities in Pulse Secure in order to completely compromise affected devices. Once compromised, backdoor accounts will be installed, web shells will be installed, and uh, any updates will not typically delete these backdoors. So these uh, beachheads will persist even after a system is upgraded. The attacker will typically also modify the system in order to establish special backdoor accounts. And for example, if the system does require two-factor authentication, two-factor authentication will not be required for these backdoor accounts. So the attacker will still be able to just log in using the attacker's established passwords. Also, logs will be modified in order to make detection of these uh, exploits more uh, difficult. Now, as far as Pulse Secure's side of the response goes, Pulse Secure did publish an integrity checking tool. You can use this tool to verify if your device has been compromised. Pulse Secure also published an advisory with some tips in what you can do in order to prevent exploitation. For example, they recommend to disable the Windows File Share browser and also disable the Pulse Secure collaboration uh, feature, but uh, they do not have a patch available yet. Neither is there a timeline for a patch in the advisory. Within the show notes, I'll link uh, to the advisory. So maybe by the time you're listening to this, uh, there will be more details about a patch timeline, but this is something that you certainly should patch as soon as a patch is released. And while right now it is really more being exploited in a more targeted fashion, it is a fairly wide list of targets that is being mentioned here, not just government organizations, but also financial organizations. And if there's one thing we should have learned from the exchange uh, server vulnerability, as soon as something like this becomes more known, there is sort of a tendency for the attackers to just sort of give it a last shot and try to exploit as many devices as possible. So even if you don't consider yourself a target for these more advanced attacks, uh, you may become one within the next uh, couple of days and before a patch becomes available. Next up, we got uh, three different vulnerabilities that are also actively being exploited in SonicWall's email security product. This product is available as a hardware appliance, but also a virtual appliance and software for Microsoft servers. And the vulnerability is present in all versions of SonicWall email security. SonicWall did provide updates for version 10, which is the currently supported version. If you have a prior version, meaning version 7 through 9, then you better renew your license so you get to update and protect yourself. The first vulnerability allows the creation of an administrative account. This vulnerability does not require authentication. The two other vulnerabilities, one to create files and one to read arbitrary files, does require authentication. But of course, if the attacker is able to create an account first using the first vulnerability, the second parts are then rather trivial. 
But hey, we're not done yet. There's also a vulnerability in Synology Disk Station Manager. Well, we had earlier this week, maybe yesterday it was, a QNAP, sort of a competing uh, product uh, with uh, similar vulnerabilities. This one is a number of remote code execution, but also file read vulnerabilities that allow the stealing of admin credentials. So certainly something that you want to patch. And remember, don't expose these devices uh, to the internet, even if the manufacturer kind of sells them like you should do that. It's a real, real bad idea. And well, after so many critical and serious vulnerabilities, something on the lighter side, Cisco also revealed two vulnerabilities that can lead to a remote code execution on an air fryer that apparently can be connected to the internet. The Kosori Smart 5.8 quart air fryer is affected from this. Not sure if there's an update. Well, uh, maybe the real update here is to go back to your cast iron skillet, which will last your lifetime and is certainly not connecting to any Wi-Fi. Well, and uh, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.